York. Ebro in the morning. On Hot 97. Oh, good. Ebro in the morning. The amazing. Hi. Laura Styles in leather. And All Wrestling right. Tee Rosenberg, you've let me down today, brother. I took a day off of Wrestling Tees to wear just a pink tee. Salmon, salmon tea. Salmon tea. Salmon, salmon tea. It was a rainy day. I wanted to brighten things up. Yo, give it up for Damon John here. Legendary yeah, yeah, yeah. game, man. Legendary businessman. If you don't know the history, For Us, By Us was the OG brand, right? You yeah. were a part of that? Boo boo. Sure. And what, what, what else were you a part of in the early early hip-hop clothing days, Damon John? Uh, Willie Esco, um, uh, Heatherette, Married to the Mob, uh, 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 a couple of them. Yeah, yeah, a couple more. Were Drunken you? Monkey, yeah. Oh wow, really? Junk. Yeah. Those were the jeans. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> people oh, used to get robbed for those jeans, boy. <laughs> them jeans was selling for like twelve hundred dollars a pop. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How much was you getting them for? Like a hundred, hundred dollars for a pair. Yeah. Damn, you was stinging them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so Dan, <laughs> quick question. Um, yeah. was was business always your path? Like when you came in and saw, were you wanting to be a part of music or were you wanting to be a part of business or you wanted to be a part of hip hop? How did it start for you? All three. I mean, I think that's 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 the first time I've been asked that. I was always wanting to be a business kid. I was always in business. And then um, and I realized one day that I could actually do something I like. You know, mm -hmm. I failed at all the other businesses I tried to do, buying crash cars, selling crash cars, all that type of stuff, because I was doing it just for money and I couldn't care less about it. And then, um, you know, then I really realized, man, you know what? I can't rap, sing, or dance. And I grew up in Hollis, Queens, and we all know all the people that came from Hollis, Queens. And it was me and my and, and three of my other friends. One of my friends said, hey, I'm going to be the best drug dealer. Mm. Um, my other friend said, I'm going to be the best, uh, uh, at that time, video guy. And my other friend said, I'm going to be the best, um, you know, music guy. And that was, that was me, Irv Gotti, Hype Williams, and, um, and we were all about 13 years old at the time. And our other friend who became the best drug dealer, Hype wrote the movie uh, Belly about wow right so we all we all got to where we wanted to be that's pretty crazy <laughs> necessarily yeah it is. yeah we were on tours when we were like um 13 14 years old you know and, and, and what was you know and I, the reason i asked you is because i wanted some people to gain this from you because now yeah. we see you on television on shark tank love the show sure. great Thank show you. um and we see you putting out books and just doing tons of businesses what was it do you believe other than just your ability to uh sacrifice but what was it that enabled all of your friends to make the advances in business, I think I think there was it was you know you become what you think about most of the time and what you see and you know growing up in Hollis and in many many neighborhoods in the early '80s you know we we were split you know crack really hit and half of my friends wanted to be Supreme Team Fat Cat calling all those guys and then we saw Russell we saw Run we saw uh, you know LL and all them making money and doing something they love. And we realized that there was a way to actually make some money, do something you love, travel the world, you know, inspire people. And a lot of us moved over towards that direction. You know, we, we became what we see most of the time, you know. Mm. And, uh, you know, the neighborhood was split in two different ways. And as you start going around other people that are doing the same thing and having the same objectives, you start, you know, basically raising the bar on how you're going to compete. Mm. And you start to learn from them. And that's exactly what happened. Was there ever a time where you thought you weren't going to make it? Like, this isn't going to happen for me? <clears throat> often, I, even after after the success of FUBU and going, you know, I said to myself, man, I got I got hit by lightning. I got, you know. It I've happened been, one time. I it got happened my one time, time. And then all of a sudden, and then, oh, and, and then my other successful brand is Kooji. We bought Kooji out of bankruptcy. Uh, but it started to happen again and again and again. But, you know, up until the age of about 27 years old, you know, FUBU wasn't a success. I started in 89. I closed it down three times till 92. I really didn't get national recognition till 97. Um, you know, I thought it was... It so was, you weren't uh, making any money during that time? I wasn't making a dime. How were you even affording to do it? And basically, you know, I, I always say there's never going to be anything new in this world created. It's just a new form of delivery. Basically, my friends and all of all my friends and I, we moved into my house. I rented out rooms to strangers. I was doing Airbnb in the hood in 89. Um, we had sewing machines in the house, and I was sleeping in sleeping bags next to the sewing machines, and we were just doing whatever we could do. But... It was fun. If I was going on to a, 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 a video set like Punk's jumped up to get beat down and being able to see Brand Nubian, you know what I mean? And, and maybe they would wear one of my shirts. If they didn't, I couldn't care less. I was on a video set, <laughs> hanging out, <laughs> eating some free Made food, some calling the video chicks, yeah. you know, looking at the dudes and, and trying to become a rapper or whatever the case is. I loved what I was doing. And that, did and they that, wear something in the Punk's jump up to get beat down? They did. They did. Actually, who who, who wore something? Um, uh, Sadat. 
to Dot War something. I mean, my first couple of videos was Old DB and Mariah Carey when he did that that song with Mariah Carey. Uh, That's big fantasy. Miss Jones, uh huh. Um, uh, Where I Want to Be, Boy. Um, Shout out uh, to Miss Jones. Yeah, uh, Method Man and uh, and wearing the hat and the ice cream video. Um, and then you know Ralph McDaniel's giving me my shot, you know, and saying, hey, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you uh, uh, put your clothes on the runway during the show called he had called uh, Fat Fashions. Those are my those are my little uh, you know things that 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 took it to another level. And then I would just keep trying to build on top of that. But but I want to go to the beginning though because how okay so you your friends are saying okay one of them was inspired by he must be a videographer drug dealer. But what was it about clothing? Why was it that was your mom a seamstress? Did you guys have a background? What was mom it about showed fashion? a little bit. Mom showed a little bit, but we didn't have enough money. So mom showed me how to sew my clothes because at that time hip hop when it was coming around we had to you know we would alter our clothes. We would uh, yes. Put, put, and stripes and in the in the in the pants and and you know and hem them. I didn't have money to get them done, so I would do that myself. And so then when I started doing that myself, I started to say, you know what? There's there's a way that I can alter all kind of clothes. But why don't we make our own? And then I remember getting inspired by cross colors and Carl Kanai, and seeing that you can do it. But cross colors really just made everything kente cloth colored. And I said, why, why can't I just get a pair of blue jeans and be blue, not? Not yellow or not purple. Green. Or, or, yeah, you know like what I'm saying? Big green yeah. Yeah, yeah, like the big green joints? Yeah, like the I just I wasn't feeling pocket. that. So, yeah, I, yeah, so yeah. why can't I just get a basic pair of blue jeans? You know, yeah. so, um, um, and that's really where it started. <sighs> and so you eventually, mid-90s is when it starts popping for mm -hmm. you. And by the time we get to 97 and you're nationally distributed and you're in like every up against the wall and downtown locker room and all the different places that certain and now jeans and yeah and, and mm. department store <laughs> how, did, yeah. the, did, the, did the money start rolling in at that point the money started coming in right around 98 99 yeah that's when that's what when, kind of money that's a well, give me your number millions. millions yeah yeah we started more we, than one yeah we hit about we hit about 300 400 million around that area 30 uh 98 99 and, that's and that was split between you distributors distributors everybody we split up all that all yeah that. so um and and that 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 run stayed until about i i think 2004 you know um was a nice brands. tight run though it's a nice yeah tight. And, then, and then um but but you know and that what was happened? all fubu that was mainly FUBU with a little bit of Drunken Monkey and all that stuff. And then we would acquire Kooji, and Kooji would start really hitting around 2003 uh, to around 2008. Um, and then, you know, then, then all of our other investments in our businesses. You know, and, and some we, failed, and, and some lasted. And then you would invest in other people's brands? In other people's brands. So, so we would go and partner up with Heatherette. We would partner up with Willie Esco um, and other brands like that, and um, and some work. And you had it. the know-how, so you could say, "Hey, here's what we're gonna. This is yeah." Well, w w you really think about it like this, you know? What wh what were we? Were we designers, or we were uh, distributors and manufacturers and producers? And that was more what we were than designers. Okay, Fubu got us in the door, and we realized what the culture needed. But now, why don't we use that machine and utilize that for? other brands in other areas. We didn't want to cannibalize ourselves. That's why we'd go and get a company called Heatherette because why sell to the same buyer more men's clothing? Why don't we sell ladies' clothing or, uh, you know, skateboard clothing or, mm. or something like that? Now, it says, I'm, I'm, while you're talking, because I wanted to see, like, it's always interesting you hit such a high mark, right? Mm -hmm. um, and obviously it took you a long time to get to that mark. Um, so I was looking up your net worth, like what you're oh, worth, and I don't that? even that's know. Always wrong. I don't even know if that's it's, real it's never or, right. It's, it's never right. right. It's never. And, and you know that's not a high mark in our business. You know, if you really look at when I came into the business, Levi's doing 18 billion a year. You know, Nike's doing. Well, I, I guess for hip hop clothing, I'm thinking yeah. more of our uh -huh. community because you know, and we'll get to like your growth out of just doing hip hop things, etc. Right. But I did see an article where it says you lost 20 million. Mm hmm. Um. Yeah. How did you lose twenty million? Yeah, and, and that's a good question. It, it's just like the NBA players and, and things like that. You know, I didn't have an education on money and finance, and that's what you really need financial intelligence. So when I first got into the business, I started making all that money. I wouldn't necessarily go buy necessarily the lavish things, but if you go and buy a house, and let's say a house is a couple of million dollars, you still got to pay taxes first, and then you say, all right, well. The mortgages, whatever the case is, but you're not thinking about the land taxes. You're not thinking about the maintenance. You're not thinking about interior decorating. You're not thinking about all that other stuff. And before you know it, you do that. You can go and put investments away all you want when the market is uh, doing well at high, when the market's high. But then all of a sudden, you need that money that you forgot that you need to bring back to help take care of that house. Mm -hmm. And you, then you got to sell yourself when the market's low. You know, being bank going bankrupt is very, very easy. And that's why... 
uh, in the book, The Power Broke, how I talk about over 67, uh, 65% of NFL and NBA players, they're bankrupt three years out of the league, or mm. lotto winners are bankrupt three years after receiving the lotto because not having financial intelligence is exactly the problem. You don't need money to make money. You need to know how to keep money when you, when, once you get it. And in your book, which is uh, a New York Times bestseller right now, How Empty Pockets, a Tight Budget, and a Hunger for Success Became Your Greatest Competitive Advantage, is this specifically about um, keeping money? Or is it, do you give, I mean, obviously it's not more than one way to do it, but do you talk about in what ways you have now found new wealth and have now invested in other things? What are you saying? No, in The Power Broke, what I do is I study 13 different people, everybody from Kevin Plank, who didn't have money to cross over a, under a, a bridge, right? right. Uh, you know, and he had to get a ticket to cross over the bridge, and now he's doing $4 billion a year in Under Armour. To uh, to various amount of people in the book from uh, Rob Durdak, right? Mm -hmm. And what I in the book what I show is you don't need money to make money. You need a lot of other things. You need OPM, but it's not other people's money. It's other people's manufacturing, mind power, manpower, <laughs> marketing. <laughs> mentors, right? And you can always make money off other people's mistakes. And that's what I put in the book because most people have been brought up with you need either a famous last name or you need some contacts and I don't have any of that. I mean, I have a famous last name, but if I tell Elton John I'm his son, most likely he's not going to believe me for various different reasons, right? right. <laughs> so um, that's what I put in the book. And, and if you do look at the wealthiest people in the world, over 60% of them are self-made men and women. That means they were all broke. So everybody out there thinking they need to go borrow money from somebody or go mortgage their house and do all that type of stuff, they don't need to do that. When I mortgaged my house, I already had $300,000 in orders. I already had proof of concept, all right? I just didn't do that right away. And that was not until 96, 97, like I said, and I had already started in 89. Uh, so, so that's exactly what the book is for. It's, like, it's stop using excuses. Stop thinking you need money. Stop thinking you need contacts, and you just got to go out there and get it but done. But what do you need? I'm, and I'm going to go to you next, Rosenberg. What, what, like you said OPM, other people's manufacturing, but that's relationships. That's the ability to pick up a phone. That's Like you said, I had proof of concept, which means you had put something together that looked like a tangible element, went to other people, and said, hey. But I got the door slammed on my face a hundred times before that, and I didn't just wake up with those contacts. I didn't know anybody. I had to make those contacts, and it had to be what's in the best interest for them, those people, right? Right, right. It's not, it can't just be straight up a favor for you. Yeah, it wasn't a favor for but me. But that's it was key what's in what you them. said, though, yeah. right? Like, you thought about, and I tell this happens to me often, you thought about those other people's businesses and what Correct. they needed and figured out how you could help them get what they need so they wanted you to be a part of it. How can I add value and over-deliver to them if I had to intern someplace, if I had to empty somebody's garbage, whatever I needed to do to get the opportunity to show them that I can add value. At the end of the That's day, it's going to be about though. every any business we do. It's what can you do for that person? That person has their own problems, dreams, stresses, whatever the case is. So any business we're doing today, even as we're talking, you know, and you're, you're great broadcasters and Thank people you. think it's easy. No, to tune in every single morning to listen to every, to, to 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 listen to you all the time, you have to be adding value to them. They yeah, you have to be what's enriching in it for me? them. Like, for yeah, me. exactly. That's exactly it. What's in it for me? Um, and 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 Rosenberg next, but I, I, the reason I keep harping on this, no, but the reason I keep harping on it is because in our world right now, everybody's a fucking CEO. Yeah. Everybody's a fucking boss. Right. Everybody thinks they can be right. a boss. Very I'm true. gonna be a boss. I need to be independent. I need to do this and I need to do that. But they aren't willing to do what we just talked about, which is figure out in what ways that their business is going to add to someone else's business so that they can all make Correct. great business Correct. together. At the end of the day, the, way, the, the, the most successful people in the world, people are buying into them personally because they add value to that person no matter what. So I even say people on the gram. I mean, the gram is very simple. It's, it's, it's a half an hour commercial. It's a half an hour television show. And if 28 minutes of it, you're selling something, then you, somebody's going to switch the channel. But at 28 minutes of it, you're giving value, whether it's humor, whether it's a visual pleasure, whether it's education. Then the two minutes that you're selling something, then somebody's going to buy something. But you have to give content and value. And everybody in the world is a customer. And there's only three ways to deal with customers. Acquire a new one, upsell a current one, or make one buy more frequently. That's it. Say that again. There's only three ways to deal with a customer, and everybody in the world is a customer. You have to either acquire a new one, upsell a current one, or make one buy more frequently. There is no other way to operate business, period. 
Meaning, you e you have your you need to either go find more customers so you make more money. Buy more well, customers. customers you currently have. You have to make them spend more money. Mm -hmm. Spend more money. Buy 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 a drink and fries. All right, right. You need to get you know some fries next time. Right. So buy, buy tickets to the concert and a t shirt when you get there. Correct. Mm -hmm. Or or lastly, make them buy more, more often. Come back to the store more. That's it. Um, how did the uh, are you surprised about the Shark Tank? success and that you became a TV guy who now you have lots of people who just treat you like a star because you entertain them on television. Absolutely shocked. You know, I, I never thought that, uh, I never wanted to be in front of the camera. Many of us have seen a lot of celebrities and they don't have any privacy in their lives and I never wanted to be that person. I wanted to be like a, a Walter Cronkite or Dan Rather. I figured, you know, I'd walk down the street nobody would be like, you know, yo, hey, yo, Dan Rather, check these out. But all of a sudden, I go on the show, and I'm like, who wants to see five businessmen and women just talk crap, but leave it up to somebody like a Mark Burnett who knows how to put it together, you know what I mean? And the show just started to take off. I and, love it. And I when we found it. out there was the number one show watched kids 5 to 15 on network and parents and kids together, that's why you see people like Mark Cuban doing the show. Because Mark Cuban was bigger than the show was before he came to the show. And when he found out that, you know, it, you it, reach everybody. it's helping young entrepreneurs and stuff like that's that. That's why I love it, man. It. I love it. My, it's funny. My, it, my, it's exciting. My wife just in the last, like, few months got, it's always on in my house now. Well, it's on on TV. Yes, like, really? like, got a new viewer. <laughs> it's, yeah, there you, you, One at a time. Yeah, yeah. Said, <laughs> you, you need to acquire new customers. We That's right. One. Uh, we just acquired a new well, It's customer. on like all day. It, 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 yeah, it we're, we're, we're with the Kardashians of CNBC. Yeah, it's on yeah. CNBC all it. day and it's, it's so really tight. entertaining. I will watch it what's for been, hours. Uh, what's been the biggest investment you've made or the most successful investment from the TV show? Mm, I, I brought some by here for you. So let me see. The phone holder? The socks, the Bomba socks. Okay, what's so special about these socks? You know, there's no Set. seam in the toe right Throw here. Me some socks. Let me see them socks, right? baby. And and uh, oh. e and every pair that you buy, one pair goes towards the uh, homeless shelters because the the, the one of the major uh, issues they have is the care for their feet. Right, 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 right. right. But then the 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 oh, biggest one we have is um, it's on Carl's Junior and Hardy sandwiches now. It's this boneless rib. That is on top Ooh. of the burger. It's called Al Bubba Baker's Boneless Ribs. And and where and, and what's no, the business? No this? patent. It, it, there's a patent on it. No bones are in the ribs at all. They pull the bones out of the rib, and there's a patent. And on that the product, wasn't on the done process. before. Wasn't done before. And so a guy came to you and was like, "I have an idea to remove the bones." He had already had done it. He's actually he was a, he was actually rookie of the year in 1978 on the Lions, um, and he decided to to work on this, and he worked on it, and he dropped it for about 13 years working on it, and then he came onto the show and you know what we did this deal about four years ago and the deal almost fell apart several times because i couldn't really add the value that i thought i can add to it and then we went but out but you knew you love some goddamn ribs of you course the black dude right. does business uh, with ribs of course you know, it's, got, it's, it's gotta it's gotta be something you love well, well, that's right you know what i mean well okay so sure. here's what i what i often do when i watch the show and the reason i love the show it's because I got a few dollars sitting around to make investments myself. We, we always, we know. You talk about it all the time. I'm always looking for a little something. Once it goes on the TV and you guys run the episode, it's already out the door mostly, right? Like, like in, in, in what's that? Because by the time I'm seeing it, because I've done it's it, over. It's, oh, it's over. Like, I go yeah. to the site like, ah, man, this thing's out of control already. Yeah, yeah. So we shoot two times. We shoot 10 days in June, 10 days in September. You probably see it starting in September, October, November. Those those pitches can be an hour and a half long. You see about eight minutes of it. Then it takes us about six months to close each one of the deals. That's that's the real process. So it's already done. So by the, by the time I oh, see yeah. it, you've it, it is it's television. Happened. It's over. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now yeah. here's my next question: How many things do you pass on on TV or anybody up there that then later you're like, look, for the TV wasn't into it. But let's cut None. another deal. None. You keep it Almost real. It's nothing. really real. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's over. You're done after that. Because you know we're seeing 200 people within those um within those um uh, those 20 days. Damn. And when they're coming through those doors, usually you get buyer's remorse. Forget even how many I miss. Usually, like, oh, did I just did mm. I just dedicate two hundred thousand yeah, dollars to a potato? That. How many times you know, does that happen? Like you get buyer's <laughs> remorse, right? But but you know, but but then you get into the business, and that's when it really takes those three to six months to go. Okay, this is a real business. This is not. I like the person. Because end of the day, it's going to be if you like the person, right? Like now, I said before, it's only question. if you like the person. You're not playing with your own money. Oh, 
If I wasn't playing with my own money, I'd give everybody a deal. Matter of fact, everybody here on the well, show, no, no, no. you'd be meaning, on the- meaning, meaning you. I'm sure you have a fund or something that you that you a venture capital fund nah, or something nah, that nah, you I don't deal with. Other, I don't. I don't. I don't like being in charge of other people's money like that. I, I can't sleep at night if I take other people's money like that. You know. Plus, if I'm supposedly somebody who understands business, then I need to be able to back up what I'm saying because I want to reap all the rewards too. You know, so I'll take the I'll I'll lick my wounds and take the losses if I have to, and then I'm also gonna reap the rewards. Mm. Interesting. I just don't like taking other people's I'm, money. No, I'm buying it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll play along because I like the show. Yeah. Uh, Damon John, right here. The power broke. Um, uh, he's slinging socks. He's what is this here? Rise and grind. Just a little motivation. Yeah, I'm just giving these things. See, these are all my Shark Tank products. No, but is this, what is this meant for? This for on the back of your phone? Yeah, yeah there you go. Just as something to help. If this hold wasn't your phone. on Shark Tank. This is just someone I ran across, and I love this product. This uh, this is called Love Handles, right? And then you put it on the back of your phone. You won't drop it on your face when you're looking at your phone in the morning in the bed or or. It's a little sticky thing. It says Rise and Grind on the back. Yeah. That's kind of hot. I like that. Yeah, it's cool. It actually it is it's somewhat useful. It's useful. You wish you'd come up with the um, fidget spinner. No, oh, I do. That I do. I wish. Fidget I wish just came up with a patent for that thing. Because I know. Yeah, everybody's guys, copying. The, you know, it. the fidget spinner is not new. It's been around for it's a long time. It's been around time. for like thirty yeah. years, right? Yeah. So yeah. Someone, someone yeah. had to have done something recently to make a hell of a lot of money, right? Oh yeah. Someone's getting super they, paid. Somebody had a distribution. They just put it in every corner. Um, Damon, as a black man in business. Yep. Okay. Um, talk to me about why uh, black business doesn't do better in your experience. Why it doesn't do better in what sense? Meaning, you always hear people saying they don't like supporting black business or we spend money outside of our communities more mm. often than we spend with businesses in our communities. Um, I think some of us know what the answers may be, but... Isn't it just easier to spend on big products that have already been there as maybe? opposed to new products? That maybe. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I know that we, I, I know that we definitely spend, with, you know, in, in, our, in the advertising world, we're called shoes super heavy users, right? And we, we spend every dollar that comes in, we spend 90 cents out of the community. I don't know that there is not, uh, people People currently say they do not want to support black business because obviously I'm here because people have supported a black business. Um, I, I don't, you know, it all depends on how we're phrasing the question, you know, because like you said, a lot of the big ticket items out there are not necessarily owned by people who are from uh, African Americans. Do you believe that there will ever become a day where the African American, the black spending power, we will be able to actually use it powerfully? I do believe that if we can get together and harness that power, it would be it would be a game changer in, in various many ways. Yes, I do believe that it would it would give us uh And you think it's possible? I do think it's possible. Absolutely. Well, you know, I I don't have any reason to believe it can. You know, a lot of other cultures have been have been uh, you know, have 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 forced themselves to yes. support within their communities and I think that we can do that. Absolutely. But it's all going to start with an education. You know, right. it's all going to start with uh, financial intelligence at an early stage. It's all going to start with teaching our kids technology, you know, and to, to move with where the, where the world is going. Because, you know, um, and it's all going to also be, be need to deal with, with media, too, with, with uh, telling, you know, telling young men and women that it's not cool to disrespect women and or call themselves a certain word that 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 is that that makes them mentally uh hypnotize themselves that they are less of value than other people and you believe that that the n-word and these behavioral things have now caused people to think that they aren't valuable and thus they can't see themselves become, being successful you like you spoke what, about early in the you become what you think about most of the time exactly and if the and if and if, and if the images that you see are there are are being promoted and pushed and 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 uh, of of negative things, and you are looking in the mirror at that type of image all the time, and that's the image you want to look at. You do have other images to look at out there, but if those are the ones that that are that are being advertised and marketed, and other people are you know finding entertainment and value in it, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna start to think that you are less than others. What is Damon on Demand? What is that? Damon on Demand is my platform for entrepreneurship. So Damon on Demand is an interactive platform that when you go on, basically you can learn everything about what's the difference between a trademark or a patent or oh, 
you know, and things of that nature. And it's uh, it's something you can keep going back to. So what I did was I put on an interactive platform, DamonOnDemand.com, that you can go on there and you can learn $20 million of my mistakes. And that's where you saw the $20 million of losses that I had because mm-hmm. I didn't have a Damon On Demand. I didn't have a Shark Tank when I was coming up. If I would have had a Shark Tank to see what real millionaires and billionaires want to hear from you when they're trying to invest, I would have failed if I went on the Shark Tank. I didn't have enough information like mm. that. And now I have that. But people, you know, like when they see Shark Tank, they can't get enough. So I put something called Damon On Demand for those who are starting up and those who want to establish uh, themselves in business. And then I have something else called Blueprint & Co., which is like a WeWork, like is a, a, a co-shared space for people who are fellow sharks. People like people in this room who say, you know what, when I go to L.A., I don't want to meet, I don't want to drive around and have 19 meetings and never follow up with people. I want to go to one place where I can actually catch everybody and do business and leave, and and that's what I have. Uh, that's that's the higher level platform. It's called, it's like a WeWork, but it's called Blueprint and Co. Um, and not to show so much of your hand, um, because I'm sure you're making investments that we don't know about. But you spoke about parents and families, and specifically black families, knowing about technology and where business is going. Right? Yeah. Um, is there anything like if I'm a parent and I'm looking for something that my kid, you know, um, should be into, so that you know, because I have a big thing about education, coding. You know, and kids having when, you know, because nowadays, you remember we used to get out of high school, we had a skill, right? You could do right. something. You could right. fix a car, maybe you take auto shop, you could pottery, you know, you had your little, what is that, the wood shop class. Like you could do well, a little man. something right. with something. With, a lot of these programs in many schools in our neighborhoods have gotten cut, yeah. you know, so you end up getting out of high school, no skill. You could basically take a test. Right. I, I, I think education, uh, digital literacy is extremely important for not only kids, but our parents, too, today. You know, when our parents used to say, you want to learn something, boy, go down the library, roll up your sleeves and dig into a book. Well, I don't care what the, the, the leader of the government is going to be or anybody else. Nobody can save you. And technology is changing everything. So if the number one job in the country is operating heavy machinery and trucks and everything's going autonomous and automated, then truck drivers ain't going to have a job. Mm -hmm. Now, if you know how to code and you know routing and you know everything else like that, then you're going to be able to do those type of things. If the number one thing in the the country for females are executive assistants and things of that nature, but everything's going virtual online, you're not going to have a job. And if everybody Mm -hmm. thinks that uh, immigration is taking our jobs. Well, when I called, when when I called to get a travel agent, it wasn't an immigrant. It was orbits, right? When I called a computer, yeah. Operators, it's called Google. Operators don't have a job anymore, right? This is technology that's taking it, whether it's going through an ATM or going through a, a toll, right? So people need to understand coding and, and all these things that are making the world work. And if you can, I've met in the last year over 200 people that became millionaires from their cell phones in the last year off their couch selling things. Whether it's a spinner that you take in and you then, you know, aggregate and sell it online and you sell a million of them, whatever the case is, people can become uh, empowered uh, with their cell phone now because those things are more powerful than the computers we grew up on. So people have to understand where technology is going. Damon Johns is named. Damon, has Trump been good for business for you? Uh, the mark has been good. Okay. Pretty much. That's about it for me. <laughs> the mark has been good. Um, were you, did you know he was going to win in your world, operating with the big business banks? No, I knew, folks? you know, how I knew he was going to win huh. because I'm, I'm on the road over 200 days speaking and every place that I was driving to, if I had to go from Nebraska to someplace else, every single highway, there was a tractor trailer parked out on the edge of everybody's farm with Trump signs on it. That was, he had millions and millions and millions of dollars worth of free advertising. And, and they, then the media, we jumped in because and, it was and, so entertaining, compelling. Exactly. And, I told, and I told people, you know, he, he probably is going to win it, you know? What happens next? Does he, make four, does he make four years? I don't know. I don't know. Listen, I'm on the plane and I'm, I'm, I'm rooting that the pilot does a good job because I'm on the plane right now. That's, that's all I can really say at this yeah, moment. We don't want to crash. Exactly. That's for sure. We don't want to crash. Damon John, get his book. Thank you, man. The Power of Broke. Damon Appreciate On it. Demand. Wait, 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 How wait, do wait. I find Damon On Demand? How do wait. I find Damon that? DamonOnDemand.com. My name is spelled like Raymond, but with a D. So go to and Dam- not Draymond, like no. Draymond Bonito Green. said your name was Draymond. No, no, no. no, no. no. DamonOnDemand.com, like Raymond with a D. You know what? I did want to talk to him before he leaves because I thought it was really important. I read that you recently beat thyroid cancer. Yes. And I want you to talk to talk to about it because my mom, when my mom um, was diagnosed with breast cancer, uh, the key for her being you know healthy now was early detection. 
Absolutely. So, so you know, and, and first of all, I'm fine. I'm totally fine. I, I'm cancer free. I don't have an issue. When I went in, I had, I had already gotten a, a, a checkup, right, to find out, you know, what was going on with me. They said, hey, you probably need to pull this lump out of your throat, whatever it is. Mm. I didn't find out it was cancer until after it was pulled out. But what I realized is that so many of us watch people and we see them when they already it's already too late. And we mm-hmm. go, man, I hope that never happens to me. But I want to be an example to people. When they see me running around and jumping around and doing stupid stuff, I want them to say, I want that to be me. So if there's ever something wrong with me, I get early detection, Mm. whether it's a colonoscopy, an endoscopy, it's a mammogram. If you know that you have uh, diabetes in your family Mm -hmm. history, go get it checked out early because then you could be like me running around because – you know, the, the old saying is that a, a man with his health has a thousand dreams. A man without his health only has one. Real success is health. It's access to information. And it's being able to be around your loved ones. And I I, I didn't I was, I was challenged with if I was going to tell people about it because I didn't want all the, oh, my God, you know, type of stuff. Right. But really, you were OK. Right. I, I'm OK. Like right. you, didn't, you didn't want the sympathy right. when you were fine. Exactly. And I, and I know cancer is a very, very sensitive mm-hmm. topic to a lot of people out there. But. You have to check yourself out. You cannot stick your head in the sand and think it's going away. And I am as healthy as I can be. I'm going to be here to walk my little girls down the aisle when, when they grow up and stuff like that. And I wanted to express to people that if I had to find out the reason for my success, maybe it's to be here today to talk to people and change this one person's life, to make them go to the hospital or go get a colonoscopy or something like yeah. that to still stay around in their, in their family's lives. Sometimes I just yeah. wish I could give everybody a little bit of my Jewish paranoia that sends you to the doctor every time you feel anything. Oh, that's believe right. Me, I have Laura, too. you got it. You, I got it. You have that Guatemalan <laughs> paranoia. That's anything, that Spanish like, I'm mom. Going, I'm that's going. that Latin mom she's paranoia. Sta- I mean, yeah, the city MD like- tells her to go home. <laughs> They're like, you know what? It's enough. You're fine. You're no, but, fine. And I find it especially in men. You know, sometimes they're shy or, or they feel like, I don't know, for some reason. They're it's scared, hard. man. We also get scared. Yeah. yeah, I know, but it's so important. And I try to preach that as much as I can because, like I said, I still have my mother because of that. That's right. So that's why I'm glad that you're actually talking about it and encouraging people like get checked out thank you man thank you thank you damon john the global ambassador of entrepreneurship thank you president obama what do do you do with that job now nothing uh nothing now i'm waiting for when obama's gonna get back out (laughs) there and i'm gonna go hang out with him